All those in favor say no say aye. aye. Um, in public comment. I do not. Okay. Consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. I will move approval of the consent agenda as presented. As second. All those in favor, say no to say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. service uh, has been installed and the transformer showed up on Monday and we got that set. Um, that will be getting all board and energized uh, starting. Uh, guys, we're working on it today, so we're hoping to get, be able to get that heated up. Maybe by the end of the week, but first part of next week for sure. On that temporary set there. So we're working on that. Um, Fault in place, a new development out here in Meadowview. Um, Russ was in, got all that wire in, finished up that. That is all energized, ready to go. And we'll be, um, we'll be putting in a couple of services for those first two houses. First part of next week, uh, the capital improvement plan uh, east of town. They are got just about all that stuff that we wanted to start with. All that wire is in. The secondaries are in, the services are in that we wanted to put in. They have now started on the feeder started up on the north end of town north of the middle school on 4th Avenue. Uh, they're coming down there. Uh, they're down 4th Avenue across in front of the city shop and now they are coming down 5th Avenue. So they're making really good progress. They're doing good work. Uh, everything's clean up the restoration looks really nice. We have heavy complaints. Um, some people have asked what's going on. Just a few, you know, hey, this, this got missed. So they've gone back and cleaned it up right away. They're doing a really good job. We're really happy with them. So, we're working really good with the customers and the homeowners and stuff. So, yep. That's about it. Any 
Yeah, um, you know, down our going one for testing, so we're going back to training that fluid. We uh, spent the time working with that meter relay <coughs> and industrial part, trying to get these wires to communicate better. We're gaining a little ground, um, slowly but surely, we're starting to get picked up a few more, so we're continuing to, to work with that. So, um, we got fall flushing coming up here. We'll do uh, selective trying to get the bad areas again this fall, similar to what we did last year. And we're not coming two years, we've done that now, but instead of flushing every hydrant, we just go to the, the dead end, the, the known problem areas or areas that need attention. Um, the next couple of weeks here, we'll keep an eye on these, see the weather, and get them. Get that done. I uh, attended the AWWA conference last week. We uh, started locating and we've been helping, uh, helping the line guys on some of the capital fund there. Um, power plant, been pretty focused on the uh, <clears throat> relay updates for the engine in the kitchen and digging into that, that spaghetti bowl of wiring behind the cabinet back in there's impressive that you can know what goes with that to where so it's He's, uh, Jim's been working quite a bit on that. And then we got the, the breaker testing <coughs> coming up. Um, thinking seven to eight different nights we'll be doing the short brief, there'll be brief outages over five minutes, or on, under the five minutes, over a couple minutes. Um, we're working with communicate the communication out to the critical customers on how that stuff works. Trying to do as much switching as we can to not have to take peak levels. Um, so we'll do half of the stuff out of the north belt one night, or, and then test all that equipment, then put it back in the other half. So kind of leapfrog into what we have for spare breakers and stuff that we can move around as we go through the three substations. So there will be some brief outages there in the next, I don't know, starting on the 16th. I think we're starting that night and then. Working our way through there, so that should do it. Okay, thank you. Office department, I'll see you. Um, so we <coughs> have been awfully quiet up, up front, um, just doing our normal day to day business. Um, we did have good connections this week, the bills actually went quite well. Um, we almost everybody has turned back on. Uh, I know that the bills are literally right now being printed and getting prepped to go out today or tomorrow. Sorry. Uh, we're also updating uh, to add some new verbiage on to our voicemail in case of cases outages or for close for a holiday that was never on there before. So just that way the public can kind of know if anything's going on. Um, and then we have public power week next week, so we're going to be doing lots of Facebook posts and um, have offers in the lobby to check on our customers in. So. Oh, we are going to attempt. <laughs> um, I am not artistic. Um, I believe Ashley is. And so we're going to be painting our front window. Um, just being show of support of, of Prince Square. Um, and I think we're now coming up with more ways for us to get involved in the community um, to kind of be out amongst everybody. So. Did you also share with them that you're part of the chamber leadership? Yeah, yeah. So I actually started the chamber leadership um, seminar or course. Um, just last week. Um, it was very interesting to just meet a lot of people within our community, um, some of the other business owners. And um, so this last week we learned about our communication style and um, it's very interesting to hear about yourself when learning about that and, and how accurate and maybe even how inaccurate some of that can be. Um, so I believe next, so we meet every month, um, I believe it's the third Thursday of every month. And um, it was really fun, I was a little weary Kind of going into it, but they had a great time. So looking forward to see what else they have cooked up out of the whole series. So thank you. Uh, city Princeton updates. Um, yeah, so I'm still working on the budget. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the day I will have sort of a preliminary um, levy number for the council tonight since we have to set it. some things we have our two main groups are under contract throughout this year so we'll be going into negotiations um, so that's kind of driving some budget assumptions as well as health insurance um, 
Columbus, you know, staff has done a great job of trying to hold the line on um, other expenses, so we'll see where we end up in the budget year 2020. Um, and um, we are being successful in selling the city owned parking lots um, across from City Hall on the back side and behind the old K Bob. Uh, we um, also um, had a purchase agreement for the river lot, um, 3rd Avenue South. Um, so hopefully, those will all wrap up this fall yet. Um, definitely by the end of the year. Um, we still have people. Um, and we're processing a site plan application for a laundromat over in Walmart. Um, uh, so we're looking for a micro residential suites developer. Um, we're bringing in two more phases. Um, we're still trying to work with the school, um, trying to connect them with potential developers for the vacant acres. Um, so we're just really trying to get out there and help everybody develop if we can. Um, that uh, not to exceed still with the county engineer on the uh, multi-jurisdictional project known as the South 4, Southern Island North. Um, Jen is finishing up the feasibility study. Um, we're trying to figure out where all the numbers are going. Um, we're going to be doing some grant applications to help fund potential roundabout at the schools and help the bus traffic, drop-off traffic, parental traffic, um, kind of bottleneck that happens at that intersection, but also help improve some pedestrian safety since we have a safe routes to schools sidewalk on 12th Street. Um, and so um, we're hoping that we can get an agreement to um, uh, get that approved in October with the county. Um, so it's basically a big county, city. Um, there might be a spot for PUC to sign because there's water stuff in here. Um, it's just an agreement that says we all agree to be nice in the sandbox and we all agree to pay based on this formula all these months, basically. Um, uh, let's see, we're working with the county on, um, they have a federal project on County Road 31, which is basically First Street west of 21st Avenue. Um, and uh, they have agreed to uh, support uh, a, uh, uh, a grant application, funding application, so that uh, there's a possibility of a roundabout traffic control change. Anybody that's gone through that intersection knows that. Um, we're seeing more traffic now that we've connected to the South Industrial Park. We've got Glen Meadowcraft, we have Palmer Bus, um, we have the apartments, we have um, development along the east side of 21st coming in the future. Um, so just um, a roundabout would be a more cost-effective way to move traffic more smoothly from there. Um, Jenny Reynolds, Commissioner Jenny Reynolds sits on the ECP committee for the district that we're in. Um, and so I sent her an email yesterday asking her to advocate for our funding application. So, um, and she replied in the affirmative that she would. So we'll see where that project happens. So, um, so yeah, so, and that's a 2020, Federal 26 project, so you'll see some work on 31st, County Road 31, in the next couple of years. And I already mentioned that we're going to be doing board negotiations as well, so that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. General Manager, you have a statement? Uh, yeah, on the admin side, I just want to point out that Ed is joining us today. Um, he started uh, working with our uh, staff on IT support. Um, and uh, I guess because Greg is retiring, so I just want to 
thank Greg for his service to the community. Uh, he played an integral part in us getting our AMI stuff uh, set up in place. So I uh, really appreciate all his efforts on that. And um, uh, excited to start working with that a little bit more as well. So welcome aboard, Ed. Uh, if you ever see the second pay estimate for Castor John, as Jeremy mentioned, that project is going uh, moving along very nicely. Uh, we have issued rebates uh, for energy efficiency equipment to the school district and Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, and then we just wanted to mention that uh, the utility did uh, join the city in celebrating public safety day on September 9th. We have staff there uh, uh, promoting a, a safe message to, uh, to the kids. Uh, I did attend the city's planning commission meeting on uh, September 18th, uh, and then there was a purpose uh, annual budget workshop yesterday uh, that I attended. Uh, as expected, since it's not planning any rate increase for 2024, so that's good news uh, for us. Um, uh, a lot of that's because they're projecting wholesale costs to, to statewide and, and, and be lower than what they were in 2022, which was kind of a, a messy year on the wholesale market. Um, so that's going to let them rebuild their rate stabilization and cash reserves. Uh, all my other updates are actually agenda items, so I'll take each of those individually. Moving on to unfinished business, we had a motion to add RBC wealth management to the official list of depositories. The motion was made by Commissioner Jay Bergen at the last meeting and was not acted upon. Second. I'll second that. All in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, moving on to the regular agenda. Four and fun. Uh, I, I yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I just uh, the reason this is on here is uh, from the last meeting uh, there were actually two steps that needed to happen. One was to approve res resolution 23-10, which um, authorizes our membership in the foreign fund, and the second part was to add uh, the foreign fund slash PMA to the official depository list. We we handed, we took care of the official depository list, but there actually was not a, a, a vote on the resolution itself. Uh, both of those items have to happen in order for us to take advantage of the program. Uh, so I brought it back here so that uh, the commission uh, can, uh, can approve that effective date. Okay. So it's, it's just more housekeeping. I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution 23-10 authorizing membership in the foreign fund. No, I'll second. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, Approve resolution 2310. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Hunger um, removal and mini abandonment at Third Street. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, in, in your packets of memo 23 27, um, this is in regards to a uh, parcel that was uh, that the city had uh, had ownership of and uh, was, uh, was is selling it. It is the site of an old municipal well. I believe it was wells five and six. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I, I know when the well was in operation, there were some water quality concerns as well. Uh, that well was abandoned quite a few years ago, um, and, and um, but there still remained a, a hydrant and a, and a water main from there into the system <clears throat> in order to make the sale easier for uh, the city. Uh, I, I know the, uh, the purchaser would, would prefer not to have the utility easement there if, if not needed. Uh, it is a long dead end for us as well, which uh, just, uh, it would be better for the system where that not to be there. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, it's kind of a, it benefits all three parties uh, to remove that. So uh, Scott spent a lot of time working with a, a couple of different contractors to see what we could do to remove that. Uh, after a lot of pencil sharpening and, and a lot of back and forth, uh, West Branch came in with a bid to remove the hydrant and the 
uh, that section of water main for 5250. Uh, the proposal is in your packet. Uh, Michelle and I have talked about it. Again, it, it, it helps us, uh, it helps the city. We thought just a simple 50 50 split would be fair. Uh, so the recommendation from staff is to approve uh, approve the work. Um, the utility will, will pay the bill and then we reimburse for half of that by the city. Okay. I would make a motion to call staff recommendation on the hydrant removal from memo from the DH 27. Yeah, I'll second it. I just did have a couple questions that I made. Yeah. So, are you going to cap the old line and then just let the water get stays in it? Scott, what are you going to cap? Yeah, we'll cap both ends. Um, but the one end of the hydrant is we'll shut that valve off and we'll just rebury that. And then on the end up to the west end of it, we'll uh, put a plug in there. It will be essentially empty. So, six foot gap in between the two systems, and we'll just cap or plug that other end too. So, so that it doesn't create a sinkhole or anything like that. It's just uh, yeah, it's not a yeah, traffic zone. Yeah, not a traffic zone there as well. Thank you for how you're doing it. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. We have a second. Yep. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, uh, 7C, service territory annexation feasibility study. Hi, I'm Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Memorandum 23 28. Uh, the Commission had instructed staff to look into conducting a feasibility study for the annexation of the South Industrial Lot. Um, this was, has been talked about uh, in a couple of different events. Uh, we did reach out to DGR. Uh, they did provide, um, uh, said that they would be, um, be interested in helping us with this. Uh, they're very familiar with our operations and given their current work on our cap line and rate study, uh, it makes a lot of sense for them to do it. Um, their analysis will be limited to developing where appropriate and, uh, and evaluating the financial aspects of the annexation. The intent is to give the commission the ability to better understand possible impacts. Uh, we're still need to look at cost estimates to the load, how that fits in with our financial model and relevant cost comparisons. Uh, I will mention that this is a, a, a very unique project which is going to be dependent upon many uh, local factors and, and, and data availability. And now, here we go. <laughs> um, so, DGR recommended that we just do this on a time and material basis, uh, work with staff, working closely with them to manage work scope appropriately uh, as, uh, as we determine what information is available and what isn't. Uh, so, to meet the Commission's goals, staff is recommending the Commission approve uh, DGR on a time and materials basis uh, to uh, conduct a feasibility study. Uh, clerk, Commission Commission. It's, uh, it, it's, it, it's hard because part of it is the stuff available would be to the staff and they have to make a call. I mean, we're going to have to constantly determine is it worth spending a lot of time to try to get information that may or may not be available on a case by case. As we work through it, we just say, now let's just make an assumption and move forward. Um, if the commission wishes, and you could start a, um, a not to exceed amount or, or a budget amount now, and then uh, if we ever get to that point, then I can come back and we can talk about it and see if we'll move forward or go with what we have. I, it, it's, it, it's really tough. Um, mm -hmm. We kind of like, can we get into it, see what, what we have, and figure out what we need to do? But that would be an option if you're, if you're concerned about the price, is we could just put a, a dollar cap to it for now. Uh, otherwise, I would just, um, staff is going to manage it. As best as we can, and keep the commission from the lower bill. Obviously, we're not going to run up a hundred thousand dollars bill or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, a little bit of um, flexibility would be would be nice. But uh, I understand the desire. If you want to do a not to exceed on it for now, do we have something in the budget? I should be able. Uh, again, I'm not expecting it to be awful. Um, 
whole lot. I think a lot of it is just Claire and I talking through things and seeing what we can cover. Um, I, as of right now, I'm planning to cover it in the budget that we already have approved. Uh, again, it's because I live in the problem. Um, I'm concerned about the potential limits that I'll come back to the commission with this in the growth. And so that a project that's going to be completed before the next commission meeting, which is going to take a little bit of time for us in, in time sure. to do that. So but we have some time to, to, to monitor this and provide provide feedback. But uh, I guess <coughs> uh, whatever your questions are. Yeah, I would have shared uh, commissioners and very thoughts, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I fully understand going to number and probably not. <laughs> yeah. but, I don't know. Whatever number we need, I don't know. I mean, sometimes when I see projects like this, it's like, okay, you go out and spend five, come back, tell us what you got, what you still, what you still need to do, and then you can offer us another five. I mean, I, I've seen things done that way before too, which is it's really hard for me at, at, at such an early stage to mm -hmm. to, to know. Um, and so, because a lot of it's going to come down to data availability. Right. And if you say time and material, really, it's, you're not pertinent in anything at this point. It's basically time. And no, uh, yes, it, well, it's, it's mostly just phone calls mm -hmm. between Blair and I, but if he has to drive up here, then we would have to buy it. But yes, it, it, it's, it, it, it's all spreadsheet. Right. Yeah, it needs, it needs to be an accurate and thorough study of it because if it comes back saying yes, this is feasible, then it's going to be a major expenditure that I'm thinking of. I mean, millions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it has to be done for sure. I don't think that's the question. Sometimes, if you ask for a number, they just Give you a big number to cover everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I did ask, and Blair's like, I really don't know. I yeah. thought it was something like this. He didn't want to. He didn't want to say five and set the expectations, and all of a sudden it's twenty-five. And on, yeah. on the same tactic, he didn't want to say it was twenty-five, and then after twenty-five hundred dollars, we're like, okay, well. Because the rate study was what? How much was that? I don't remember. Was it like twenty thousand? Yeah. I guess that was like the. A limit of 20. Okay. Uh, you know, but without, before we could even have another discussion, it was, I mean, I just wish that my, my, yeah, I, I, I yeah. don't think that amount, but you should be able to get a pretty good idea of where you're at. What do you think, too? Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. And, and like I said, I perceive this as being an ongoing project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> And hopefully some of that study they do for the rate study will help cross over a little bit. That is going to help tremendously, yeah. yes. So. Um, so we need to take action, right? Uh, yes, you would uh, need to approve uh, having DGR uh, do the study on a time material basis with an object seat of 20,000. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve uh, memorandum 23-28 with the $20,000 uh, limit. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Delinquent bill for property tax assessment. I did put Kathy's name on this. Yeah. Kathy wants me to start. <laughs> um, this is just uh, this is an annual activity for us um, for uh, the collection of delinquent accounts, uh, stuff that we have been uh, trying. To, uh, mostly, it's it's final bills uh, for for folks that have moved out, uh, trying to collect uh, those funds. Um, when uh, one of the options that we have. Through the city as well is to do a property tax assessment for the uncollectible amounts. Those have to be um, posted, uh, approved at a public meeting. Uh, 
commission will typically do that to get some work with city, the city that approves it, they get it, get some of the code to be included in the property tax records. Uh, in the packet, uh, memorandum 23-29, it gives you the background for the, the uh, statute, the legal language uh, that allows assessments to happen. Uh, there is a uh, list of who uh, staff has identified as uh, uh, that would qualify under the property tax assessment for uh, this coming year. There are 10 of them. Uh, you, uh, the table will summarize them out there. Uh, you see it for water and sewer, which is, uh, again, water is ours and, and sewer is the city's. Uh, staff recommends the approval of the listing uh, as a submission for questions to the property tax assessment. Uh, I will point out that if we do, uh, uh, we have sent out letters to uh, the uh, property. Uh, they do have the option to pay that without it going on their property, their property taxes. If that happens, we will remove them. Kathy, can you remind me, have we had any money? Yes, we did have some letter paid. Okay, do you know the line item? No, I don't. Okay, um, it is something that we can continue to modify right up until uh, the end of the year with the county as well. So we will re we will take people off, but these are the folks that are on the list as of uh, when the packet went out. So we would need approval to uh, uh, submit uh, Submit these accounts for a property tax assessment. And I'm available for any other questions. I'm going to get all this motion to approve the memorandum 23 29. I'll second. Any further discussion? We have a first and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, seeing all by saying aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Motion carries. 7B, GIS equipment purchase request. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Memorandum uh, 23 30. Um, staff are requesting the authorization to purchase some GIS field equipment uh, at a budget of $10,000. Um, we do have money in our budget for GIS data and maintenance expenses that we're anticipating to use up those funds this year for a lot of uh, uh, some on-site assistance that we are getting from Altec. Uh, they're the engineering firm that we work with on the GIS side of things. Um, the reason this has come up is because with the TAP plan that Jeremy and his crew are working on, um, it'd be really nice to GPS those uh, now as they're going in. <laughs> it's not working at you. Um, we, uh, we are spending some money, obviously, to have Ultimate come up and do it. Uh, Jeremy found a, a, a really good price on some survey equipment, um, and that uh, is in your packets as well for just under $10,000. Uh, kind of back to the envelope, uh, that would cover about, uh, after about two years, if we were having Ultimate come up and do it, it'd pay for itself, and then um, we would, uh, every semester around, we'd have to use equipment ourselves to uh, start going through our entire system and GPS, not just transformers and cable, but curb stops and um, water mains and, and things like that as well. So I, I think it would have a tremendous benefit to our system to have uh, some of that equipment on our own and, and getting the crew familiar with how to, how to use it. Well, more and more we're seeing, uh, both on the construction side and everything else, everybody is obviously using uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, so, uh, with the cap land uh, construction underway, this would be a great time to do this and get ahead of it, and that's uh, why we brought it to your attention now instead of waiting for next year's budget. We'd like to start mapping it as cap is out and out in the fall. So, if I understand it today, that they're going to exceed our existing budget? Um, yeah, well, I, yes, I have a, a line item uh, for GIS uh, data and equipment. Um, this would push that over. Uh, that being said, uh, in terms of the overall budget, we are trending uh, on the positive side. Um, so we are, the revenues are up a little bit more than expected. Our expenses are down more than expected. So whether it impacts the overall budget, um, I, I can't say that it would increase it. Uh, in terms of what we're going to end up, it would 
take the actual expenditures. Um, but it will affect that line item, and it is something that we had to talk about before the sale to go get your testing. So that, um, so you knew what we were doing. Yeah, and I'm not looking to pour for the water line. I just want to put everything in the line. Yeah. yeah. But yes, I would be adding it to the budget, but like I said, that being said, our actuals are, are trending rather than budget. So we wouldn't be talking about any big amount of money for sure. We just, no. We just don't want to contingent in fees and reserves and whatever. But it is a capital expense, so that's why I'm bringing it to the commission. It is purchasing some equipment. Well, the Cal Blue Day, then you can kind of do that on your time instead of waiting for the contract for the other time. Yeah, I mean, for example, um, all pay was just up Monday, Tuesday, and today, and everything they've done, he was able to get in in two days. So, um, and it's, it's been really nice to be able to go back Their machine, they can they spray white dots as they go along with them already going through, and that is just as accurate as this machine. So we don't have to go out and relocate it and then go through and bug it. We can use their dots when they're there. So if we can quickly go back and do it, it, it saves us time to go back and do it. Um, and it'll help, you know, like the GPS, the curb stops in the wintertime. We gotta go shut something off. We can take this out and go find it. It's not just the recorder that's all to go back and find it. Also, or find the equipment. And it's it's sub inch accuracy. So it's it's we played a lot of days there's still links and triple frost. And, and the elevations, you know, one of the parts of this project we're trying to set up a place where we're going to switch up 75th Avenue and we're trying to get elevations and, it, and we got to remove some trees. But I want to make sure the switch basin is at least the top, the switch basin is at least the same height as the road. Uh, we, can, we can do that with this and know we can take a reading out on the road and go out in there and read it and we can know. Within an inch, otherwise, we're going to have to do it with scrapers and levels. And well, it, it, it helps modernize our entire GIS system. Uh, right now, our GIS system is more visual. Uh, I'm using basically Google Maps, where somebody goes in and draws lines, identify where equipment is at. Uh, having this equipment will allow us to actually use GPS coordinates uh, so that when things like, you know, I'm thinking of school, that, there's a, that school incident. What, a couple months ago, might, might have helped identify where some equipment was at and prevent uh, those kind of uh, incidents from still occurring. So, uh, the more we work with uh, construction firms and things like that, uh, having digital files is just a, just a nice, convenient way to communicate to make sure we're all on the same page. Is there a motion? Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking about is yes, the, if it's not in the budget, you know, but uh, <clears throat> I hate to go outside of the budget. I know it's, it's going to save time, but that's kind of the reason we set budget. Yep, uh, and, and yes, and, that, and that's why I wanted to bring it to, to your attention. So if I'm looking at, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, right now, so this would be included under 
uh, distribution for the utility. Um, understanding that through August we're 67 percent of the way through our budget year. Um, our ex distribution expenses are sitting at 50 percent. So that's what I mean when our expenses are running a little bit slower than what we anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, the line item, which is what I was referring to, is um, I currently have $9,500 in there uh, for electric distribution. We've only spent $800, but like I said, the fairly nice well thing is up to speed, so obviously that invoice isn't in that budget yet. I anticipate that that's going to use up a lot of it, which is why I would, I would be asking for a little bit more. But uh, the $10,000, um, certainly we're only sitting at 50%. Uh, well, let me say it this way. Um, if I look at, I need stronger glasses. Um, currently, our uh, distribution expenses is at $286,000. Uh, last year at this time, we were at three hundred seven. So we did come into that bit of how we're spending lower. That would cover, more than cover, the $10,000 expense. But I just didn't want to run off one line item mm -hmm. uh, without, without the commission knowing about it. In, in, in the future, if there's a, if there's a, a topic that you can follow, like, you know, or specific numbers you look at, I want to be happy to do it. I would just make sure how you want me to handle something like that. We could pay for it and still end up under budget for this year, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. Well, I made the point. We're, we're talking a pretty minuscule amount of money, so I'm thinking. I don't know, we do any budget I've been in, and I've been in many, and we always build in a little bit of contingency for stuff like this when it comes up. You know, we take advantage of it and do it for some other <coughs> And yeah, my head is why I go through that again. Okay. Well, I'll second it. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, sir. Motion carries. Um, street lighting, 7F, Mug, City of Princeton. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, just like the, the city and we work together on an MOU regarding uh, IT support, <coughs> one of the things that I've been wanting to do is uh, again continue to, to document um, a, a lot of the, the relationship between the city and the utility. Uh, and so Michelle and I worked together to put together on this MOU for street lighting. Uh, the point of the MOU is not to create anything new, really. Um, what we're what we're doing is just simply documenting um, the, the roles, the responsibilities, and, and what each of the parties has done. Um, so I don't see this as uh, anything that hasn't happened in the past. It's just a way of, of writing it down so that in, in the future, um, when the people that follow us uh, look back and try to figure out uh, what we did and why we did it, there, there's some, some documentation to that. Uh, so the agreement here is just to establish uh, the, the, the understanding on the street lighting that the city uh, is the one that uh, kind of identifies where the street lighting goes. Uh, that's, a, that's a city function. Uh, once everything's in place, the utility uh, as a contribution to the city will take over the operation and maintenance of, of those street lights. Uh, but it also establishes a process whereby we can create a street light manual that will uh, make sure that we're putting in uh, the proper equipment and, and make sure that we're communicating together, uh, especially on developments uh, and, and new projects. So. Uh, just to, again, create an understanding between the two parties and documenting what we're currently doing for the most part. Hope that makes sense. I would just say your, your initial comment, this is not really anything new, but it's never been documented. So that's basically what we've been. And I would call past Sunday when I was in the million years. It, it, it might come up and then everybody says, oh, who does this? All we have, this was put from the 
I was hoping to just bring some clarity to the list. Okay. And, uh, we actually have it on our city council agenda tomorrow night, and it's actually on the consent agenda. So. Well, I'm sure we'll get approved. <laughs> I'm making an assumption. <laughs> well, is this one of the costs that we consider when we do the study on the pilot? I guess. Because uh, we have, we supply the, if we take care of the electricity for those, uh, and then we do the LNR on those two nights, yes, those were all included. Uh, during the course of this, and Michelle and I did identify a couple of street lights that seemed to be a uh, little outside the norm, so we did a couple of cleaned up so that we're dealing with everything in a very consistent way. So will this change anything in, in the permit uh, consideration as far as it being considered as part of the pilot? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually just documenting what that facility is. Just being happy. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, street lighting on the year of the city of Preston on the 23 381. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, 7G, 2023 MMUA safety program renewal. Uh, yeah, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so, yeah, in your back, back up to 23 32. Uh, every September, uh, our normal process is we get the uh, new renewal for the MMUA safety uh, training program that we have from the Um I received uh, the, the renewal uh, about a week and a half ago uh, on a Saturday evening, um, on September 16th, uh, uh, with the new language that um, I was, uh, came unexpectedly. Um, there, there were some, some new provisions uh, in, in the renewal contract that uh, was not aware of that was going to be in there. Uh, part of it is changing the program end date, which that was so much of a surprise because I know MMUA is switching to a uh, calendar fiscal year, um, and so the, they, they're shifting all their contracts for that. So that uh, was not uh, that was not surprising. What did catch me a little off guard was uh, there are some significant new insurance requirements, uh, mostly that each party needs to maintain certain limits, uh, which is fine. Um, provide some documentation for coverage, which is uh, new. That's something I haven't done. Before in this regard, uh, as well as having each party endorse as additional insurance on the other other policy, uh, which uh, again I found rather unique, uh, along with some dispute resolution language uh, and a statement saying that both current parties uh, had developed uh, equally the agreement. Uh, staff were unaware that these changes were being requested. Uh, we have not had time to fully evaluate their impacts on the utilities' cost, risk, and liability. Primarily on the insurance side, I don't know what, if any, impact that might have on our insurance. Uh, as a result, um, staff is uh, of the opinion that it would be prudent to not approve the safety management program renewal at this time, so as to give staff time to discuss the changes with our insurance agent and MMUA. Uh, I did have a conversation with MMUA on Friday evening, uh, and I have also shared it. Uh, this uh, new language with uh, Jim Burroughs, our insurance agent, and I have not heard back from him yet. Uh, some of the uh, comments is that this is coming down through the League of Uniform Cities, who is actually our, who has our policies as well, which uh, again makes some of this a little unique. Uh, so I'm just uh, following up on some of, that some of that due diligence. So even though normally, uh, we would, staff would be coming in to recommend the another year under the MMUA safety uh, training program. Uh, I do feel like we should take time to evaluate and then make sure we understand the impacts. At the same time, there are other options available out there um, for us to look at. Uh, this may be a good time to do that as well. Michelle and I have had a, a few different conversations on this topic. I think we're on the same page mm -hmm. uh, with all of this. That um, we don't want to just jump into something without uh, truly understanding what impacts it might have. So uh, it would result in our current safety training program contract ends at the end of this month. Uh, it would expire. 
Uh, looking ahead of the training that we have scheduled for October is our fire safety training and fire extinguisher training. Fortunately, we have a police or fire chief that can do that for us. Uh, so I don't see that uh, hitting the pause button on this will, uh, will slow anything down, uh, but it will give us time to, to fully evaluate what it means for our operations. Uh, but uh, again, this, uh, it does mean that our training program will last for a little bit until that can happen. Uh, and, and we'll defer the commission's direction on this program. I think you've answered a couple of my questions already. We, we do share this with the city of this training, right? Correct. Yes, we, we split the cost 50 50. And I think you've answered that. And it's not, it's not time sensitive, was my other question. No. I, I, again, I will keep up with our, our internal safety training. It just won't be through my right? But we will, we will continue on our internal procedures. I don't, I, I, if, I, if I may, uh, sir, uh, if you're fine with us not renewing it, I don't need a motion. Uh, oh. I just want to make sure it's okay. Otherwise, if you uh, do want us to renew it, then we would need a motion to renew it. I was going to make a motion to follow your recommendation. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, appreciate it. I appreciate it, but if, you know, the commission just wants to say, you know, go out and answer these questions and come back to us. If I may speak, um, one of the things we've been our talk about is there are other service providers, and as long as um, we can get our mandatory annual training done, and each party can get whatever field staff training that they need, we think we might there might be some lower cost options out there to look at too, and that fifteen thousand dollars. A year for the two. I mean, we split half that cost. Um, I will say that, me from a personal standpoint, I don't feel we're getting that amount of value from. That's just my personal opinion, but. Um, is it is it a requirement from an insurance carrier that you're saying that? Uh, I mean, I don't want to be out of compliance with. Uh, uh, yeah, there isn't on that. Um, Cheryl can point to there are some uh, statutory training requirements that we have. Um, open the wear program, employee right to know, workforce pathogens, things of that nature, mm -hmm. uh, which have to occur every 12 months. Um, again, through the safety program, we knew that that was being done. Uh, we had trainers coming up. As Michelle noted, uh, there are other options out there. Um, uh, some of those are remote uh, participation through videos and things like that where we can get the training there done that way. Have you, have you uh, reached out to our insurance carrier to see if they offer any of that? No, I have not. Because I, my insurance carrier provides some of that for free. Uh, okay. I mean, if you <clears throat> some place to look, sometimes they have resources where they'll cost you. Or they'll give you a discount on insurance, or you know, it depends on what it is. Yeah, okay. Might be a, sometimes they need to, for the fails to mention that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask. But uh, to me, that's all the more reason why we would like to pause this renewal so that we can do some more research. Do some research. So, so uh, you're saying? No, my motion was to follow the staff recommendation as well. All right. Uh, unless someone has a motion to approve it, I guess would be your own motion. Yes, All right. that's correct. Uh, is there anybody want to make a motion to approve that? Hearing none, I think we'll just move on to number eight possible future agenda items discussion. Is there anything anybody wants to add to the, the agenda? Next month. We don't need to know the study, but we don't know that that hopefully we will have something on it next month, but if not, we don't have it. Um 
for the future meeting dates, does that work with everybody coming into the holiday season? Or, uh, and that might get a little harder than that. Second. All in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries.